Hello everyone, it's Peter One in here. I'm an involuntary client of Mental Health Authority in Australia, have been so since 2005. And for the last 18 years, or most of the last 18 years I should say, I have been involuntary to their system. That means such things as being required to take uh, drug medications and treatment, regular consultations with their clinicians. Now the short of the long story is that I, uh, it's a very boring story and that's why I don't want to bore my listeners too much. But most recently, my uh, tribunal review, which is my, my review, my review can, is conducted every less than every 12 months. And my review has been adjourned four times so far in this current decision. So basically what they've done is said, we have to reconsider you in another date later in the future and I've done that four times uh, since, I think it's been August of this year or September of this year. Now, my clinician for over four years has been Darren Singh and um, based on my policy of uh, exposing names and so on, I have no problems with talking about him on this channel. So hi, Darren, if you're watching. Um, Darren is a public figure, in my, in my opinion, and therefore he's accountable to the public uh, and the actions that he does uh, is part of his job and that's why he's paid. Probably too much in my opinion, but that's a long story. The problem that I have with Darren is that he lacks critical thinking abilities. He's obviously been trained as a clinician and he's indoctrinated with the ideas that, you know, things like medication is good, uh, inherently good, and uh, the idea of uh, interning people in order to assess their behaviours and that sort of thing. It's a very indoctrinated system which is not holistic and it's not um, real, real to life. In the real world we go out, we do things, we interact with the world, but Darren is, has a very narrow view of the world and he brings that about in his dealings with his clients such as myself. I mean I could go on and on about Darren um, but I don't want to bore people because his personality is quite pleasant, I would say. He's quite a gentle person. Um, but his, his ability to think is limited by his experiences. And that's where I, where I feel that he has shortcomings and is unable to deal with me as a person. He doesn't understand me fully. But at the same time, because he's of, of his job, he has to claim that he understands me fully. And that's hypocrisy. So I guess that some of the things I'm going to ask him are very clear about, you know, whether he understands that the treatment is doing me benefit more than it's doing me um, harm. And I'm going to ask him about drug medications. I'm going to ask him about um, the the effect of those medications on my on my well-being, which I don't think he can answer because he doesn't know the facts and he can only speculate. Meddled with that is the idea that he his reports are normally very badly written. Uh, they were worse. They were written in worse English in the previous years, but since I complained about their English in recent years, they have improved their standards somewhat. Uh, still a lot of formatting problems. Still a lot of problems with making rash comments, anecdotal and hearsay comments, and the most astute psychiatrists um, and those who really understand what's going on will will zero in on the fact that they just don't understand what's going on with my life and and the conditions by which I was hospitalized and that sort of thing. I've, I think that inherently um, working in the mental health system entails a lot of speculation and and guesswork and uh, I don't think that's something to be uh, sympathized with so much as understood. Uh, that when you're dealing with a patient, there are lots of variables and anything can go wrong and often does go wrong. Um, but you've got to have um, a humanist side to the patient, uh, to dealing with the patient and not assume that you are able to control them. Many, many clinicians, I would say most clinicians in Australia that I know, try to control their patient excessively. And that's one of the reasons why I've been in voluntary for so long. They don't care that, I've, that I'm so old. They don't care that I'm 44 years old now. They don't care that it's Christmas time. They don't care that I feel like my, the, the vast majority of my adult life has been wasted 
on this mental health saga. It's really been a huge waste of time for me. They don't care about that. What they care about is peace or their own sense of peace, their own sense of they're doing their job, getting paid, um, and and the idea that they seem to be looking after other people just because uh, I'm on medication uh, and controlled and that sort of thing. So from a governing point of view, they're... they're focuses are essentially on convenience and compliance. I've written an essay on this and the police, for example, don't aren't there to make friends with you. They're there to do their job and to get paid well uh, for what they do. They're not there to, to be nice to you and to, to bond in a community sense with you. And the clinicians don't do a good job of that either. And Darren's been, you know, he's been gentle in many ways, but he's been very superficial uh, most of the time as well, and and obviously uh, complicit with the mental health regimen. So I don't know what's going to happen next. I am kind of, in a certain way, trying to navigate into getting a different clinician, um, but the ones that I've been dealing with in recent times have been much less um, gentle and also in the same indoctrinated fashion as Darren has been. So... I don't know what my options are. Maybe I don't have any options at all. It's going to be touch and go where I go from here. So I'll keep you updated if it's anything interesting. But the mental health system is really boring. It's really misled. It's it's indoctrinated. It's shallow. It's superficial. It's narrow-minded. And it's a waste of time. Bye for now.